Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me as I explore this amazing wide world of pens that we are fortunate enough to be able to enjoy. And there are two crab and turntable worthy pens, if there ever were two, that you're looking at right now. Yes, these are the new Kaigaloo 316s, and they are called new. And this is just the amber one and the blue one. I ordered one from AliExpress, which was the blue one, which arrived quickly because I said I wanted U.S. delivery, and it showed up in JFK quite within a few days, and it took about a week to get to me. The orange one was ordered on eBay, and it took a total of three weeks to get here. It spent a week in the U.S. postal system without any updates, and then it eventually got delivered. So I'm very happy that I now have the two to show you. I waited. You've seen the blue one in my Birmingham Inks review. You've seen how it writes, and I have an interesting ink to put into the amber one. So I think these are two extremely good pens very great values and the acrylics that uh, Kaigaloo uses still amazes me you know they've now uh, replaced the black finials and the black sections with sections of the same material as the pen which I personally like but I can also enjoy the more classic dual fold look Let's zoom in a little bit and see if we can catch some of the nuances of these resins. You know, and be able to say hello to two crabs. Both of these resins are a little bit uh, transparent. It's just a nice combination. You know, they have some pearlescence to them. The plating is great. I love that new uh, cap band that design that they're using. So we're going to explore these in detail. We're going to look at a lot of differences comparing with some of the uh, earlier versions of the Kaigaloo 316. So hopefully you will enjoy this journey that I'm going to take you on. And Mr. Crab is going to wink. So I've partially disassembled this 316. For those of you that want to see it completely disassembled, uh, I suggest... Uh, Looking at Doug Rathburn's review, I'll put a link in my video description. I enjoy sharing with you all of the reviews. I think we all add to the community. So I took it apart basically to show some of the features that I think are very nice. Like this clear uh, nib collar. And because this resin is fairly transparent, with that in there, you don't get that black look that you would get if that was a black nib assembly. And they also did a good job on the converter by putting uh, a clear knob to activate the piston. I'm not a fan of that ball, but you know, this can be taken apart. You can remove the ball. I like that uh, silicone insert there with that nice metal ring. So this, to me, is made to last. And I think that's one of the traits to me of a Kaigaloo pen. At least the 316 series is they're built to last. If the converter's branded the top of this metal piece. And for those that may remember the recent video I did on the Fuluin 017, this metal piece, you can see threads in there, so it's screwed in, but it doesn't unscrew. It's glued in place. And that's where I mentioned that I think when that's glued in place, sometimes the glue would get on this nib assembly that's screwed in and, and lock that in place, which sometimes on pens we can't remove it when we think we should. I think it's time to bring in the LED and explore this resin more closely. So here we are with some uh, diffuse sunlight. We'll bring in the LED X-ray. You know, it's a great little 
kangaroo finial there with a nice piece of dome plastic kind of acts like a magnifier and this is just a very very attractive resin and it does have a fair amount of transparency as my LED starts to strobe and I think I need to take it apart and clean the battery contacts if we look inside the cap we'll see that standard machine ledge to seal off against the section and that's a small area so I, I have not had any problems with any of my Kaiglu 316's uh, drying out I just really love this resin uh, Chatoyancy there is pretty nice the white swirls are nice just a lot of variation in it it's fairly thick you know Kaiglu's like I said are built to last and these are made very, very well. And that does unscrew at the end. No reason for it. I think they just stopped gluing it in place like they may have done on the original 316. Ah. I like the way light plays on this resin. So it would be interesting to compare the latest version of the 316 against the first one that I got many, many years ago. There's a lot of similarities, but then there's a lot of differences so obviously one the converter has definitely changed it's still branded but branded differently and here we have Kai Galoo on the new one but 316 on the original one there's a metal ring here at the bottom that nib collar doesn't really look like a nib collar like there is in the new one so there's nothing to unscrew but the nib pulls out very easily and the nib still has that nice little kangaroo design on it, Kaigaloo, two-tone. The tipping material definitely looks a little different. When we ink up the new one, we'll see how well it writes. I expect it to write very well because I've really enjoyed all of my Kaigaloo medium nibs. And I bought a bunch of extra ones to put into other pens. The other main difference is, is in this original one, the converter was threaded. But I prefer this type of design over this one. You know, the opening's the same. But it's, again, uh, it's extra cost to thread a converter like that and to, and to add more threads to that metal piece. So I don't think it's that necessary. I don't get that, you know, excited about, oh, it's a threaded converter. I've had a lot of them on my Deltas, and I've not had a converter come loose. I've had cartridges come loose, but never a converter so I'm comfortable with that. So they've done some interesting engineering changes, which I think, at the end of the day, makes the pen even more interesting and a nice addition to any collection. So this is the assembly out of the last Kai Glue I got, which is towards the end of 2020, the nice uh, lemon yellow one. And they had the upscale converter in it, there's still the 316 here versus the Kaigaloo, and there's still a metal band at the end. So this is kind of like a transition. So they've been constantly doing minor improvements, I think, to the pen over time. And the nibs are fairly similar. Again, the tipping looks a little bit different. Same injection molded feed. I've adjusted this so it's very close to the end of the, of the nib. And it just slips out. And this also has an unscrew nib assembly. But unlike the newer one, it's black and not clear. Nice O-ring there at the bottom, which I think is excellent to seal that up so you don't get ink in between the section and the nib collar when you do your filling. So, I'm, again, I like the fact that over time they've made improvements and changes to this timeless design that kaigaloo has been making for many many years so one of the main differences between the new 316 and the older 316 is this completely disassembles nothing's glued in place which is a plus and a minus depending upon how you want to look at it it takes a little effort to unscrew things so it's not like they're going to come apart accidentally but if you needed to fix the clip or rebend the clip or whatever you could do that by taking off the top finial 
And that kangaroo with baby is glued in place. You see the thickness of that resin, very nice. Here's a metal collar that has a cutout that holds the clip in place. And then the finial at the bottom of the barrel also unscrews. Be careful to not lose the little gold ring that's in place. The converter, which I've mentioned, is nice because it has that clear uh, rod at the end. It's silver because it kind of blends in, but it doesn't really go with the gold, but that nah, doesn't matter to me. The section's pretty much the same. And the nib assembly unscrews, and it is in glued in place in the older 316s. The standard feed, 6 millimeter feed, but there's been some discussion about the nib, and we're going to explore this nib. It is different, but not probably in the way that you might think. So that's it. We're going to bring in the LED and take a look at the pen. But before we do that, let me explain another little thing is there is a ledge inside there and just to show that it does work to match up against that section and then you can see where they match up there and that's good to seal it in place yeah the Chatoyan C is still amazing so let's see how it looks when the LED light is inside going to dark mode there's just some very light diffuse sunlight coming in we bring in the LED, we can play it on this resin. Brings out that pearlescence quite nice, which is responsible for that look that's similar to Chatoyancy. And it is fairly transparent. That light is quite visible inside there. The same as can be said of the cap. Again, very nice, thick material, very strongly made, which has been a Kaigaloo trait. And that new cap band is just quite interesting. I like it more than the other one, which was planar. Yes, and you do catch that resin quite nicely. And it is the same transparency, and you can see that ledge there. I think we just need to look at one more thing. And that's the kangaroo on top. Very nice logo. I like it. So here's my first 316. And the nib pulled out easily, but the assembly won't unscrew because it's glued in place. And if we take a look, hopefully you can see that glue there holding in that nib collar has a ring at the bottom, which they don't have in the other one. And the converter is uh, not quite as, as unique, but it does have Kai glue engraved on it. And it does screw in place. There's threads at the bottom. Let's compare the nibs from the first Kai glue that I've got and the recent one that I got, which is called the new model. Here we have the... Uh, two nibs. On the right is the old nib from my first Kaigaloo 316 a number of years ago. And on the left is the new nib I just uh, removed from the latest 316, the new model. The biggest difference is the length. The new one is 35 millimeters, which is more common length for a number six nib. Where the original nib was a little bit shorter, 32 millimeters. The uh, other dimensions are fairly similar, so they both fit well on a 6 millimeter feed, which is why they're number 6 nibs. The other difference is the uh, plating is done uh, much better on the older nib. The kangaroo does not have a baby in her pouch, or his pouch, depending upon uh, what kangaroo type it is, whereas on the new nib they put a baby in the pouch, but obviously the plating didn't come out as well on the new nib as it did on the old nib. 
When they do a two-tone type of plating like this, they generally use some type of uh, masking material. Uh, probably the last coating may have been a, a gold plate. So they plated the whole thing in uh, rhodium and then coated the uh, parts that they didn't want to plate gold in some type of maybe enamel or some type of paint. And then they dumped it back into a gold bath to plate gold on top of it. So that's uh, the two-tone thing. So the masking is not done well on the, on the new nib, but I just think it's kind of funky. They're both medium nibs and they both have great tipping material as you can see. So why did they change the nib? Probably to make it more common uh, size to most other nibs. And if you look at nibs a lot of times for sale, uh, spare nibs, they'll call them 35 millimeter nibs, which generally is indicative of a six, a number six nib. I changed the lighting, give me a little less reflection. The extra lighting is good for color and sometimes for detail, but when something's shiny like this, the light tends to sometimes wash out the detail. So I'm hoping this shows you a little bit more of the differences in the plating and the differences in the kangaroos. The kangaroo now matches the one on the top of the finial for the cap because it has a baby. So you may ask, how many Kaigaloo 316s do you have? The answer is six. <clears throat> so the first one was in September of 2017. Then we skip ahead over two years to my second one and third one, which were both in November of 2019. So you can see how I renewed my interest in the 316s. And then a year later, in December of 2020, a lemon yellow 316. And these three are basically all the same. They weigh about 47 grams. This yellow one, I would say, is a transition model. And it weighed in at 42 grams, so slightly less weight. These had uh, brass finials, top and bottom. They were just robust pens. And if you like to pen with a lot of weight to it, they certainly fit the bill. Now we go to the new model, which we'll call it 2021. They may have come out with it in 2020, but now I'm calling it 2021. And here, the weight is 28 grams. So almost 20 grams difference from the heaviest 316 to the current 316. They all have finials top and bottom. They all have a plated gold band top and bottom. They all have the same clip. They did change the cap band, which I find to be a very nice aesthetic change. And they've upped their game on the resins from my viewpoint. Enjoy this little eye candy for your visual entertainment. So what ink to put into the Amber 316? Well, this is a new ink for me that I got about a month ago. And I would think it would be a perfect match. This is my second one of these uh, glitter inks from J. Bond. I had a hematite, which was the first one, and wasn't happy with it and really haven't used it since I really bought it. I put it in my M800 with the italic broad nib, and it didn't like it. But we're going to give it another shot. The color card shows a nice orange color, and we do have some nice glitter there. And it does get dark if you lay it down thick, so we might expect some nice shading in addition to the nice color. The chromatography is pretty clean. You know, the glitter stays behind, and it pushes up just a yellow verging into an orange and two, maybe a light brown. It's a nice range. This came with an interesting little booklet. They certainly are promoting these inks. The 1798 inks exclusive collection discusses what 
the reason for this color is. So they do a nice job for a high-end ink. So I filled the pen and we will show the blue one writing but those that have seen my Birmingham inks video know how the blue one's going to write. Spoiler alert, this writes as good. So part of a joy of using a fountain pen and owning a fountain pen is, to me, the aesthetics. The first fountain pens were all black. Kind of like the Model T, you can get any color as long as it's black. But they soon realized about 30 or 40 years after the first ones came out, that you can put a little color into your fountain pens and you can certainly increase your market share, your audience, make more profit because people are willing to pay more money for something that looks nice in their hand, nicer than black. Nothing is wrong with a black pen, but, you know, color is nice and a variety is nice, not just one color alone. So the cap comes off in a little less than two turns, which is nice. It fits great in the hand, unposted. And like these dual fold designs, it does post, but it makes for a very long pen, and you do feel the weight of that cap. We'll give you the weights of the various elements. And it's just that... This amber goes extremely well with this design. I love this Satoyan C. I love this variety. We're now going to put this nib to paper and see how this Jehurban Egypt ink writes. So you may have heard this is very smooth, as smooth as any nib I've ever written with. It is very wet. And when I put the nib back in, I put that feed down near the end of the nib, which increases the ink flow. That glitter is nice. And yes, uh, I got a little bit of extra ink here, but and I recently filled the pen, so we're going to chalk it up to that because I haven't had any issues with it writing normally. As I love the nib and the blue pen, and we'll look at that writing now. This is a phenomenal ink and nib combination. I don't know what Kaigalu did to these new medium nibs, but they are great. I'm really impressed with what they've accomplished. And this is a great, intense, very saturated blue ink. And I think it really complements the J. Herban orange ink. I love this nib even more. I mean, it's just great. So let's rate this pen. Grab a hold of your socks. We're going to give it a 9.9. .9. It gets two checks for the nib. It gets two checks for the look, the design, the build. <sighs> Phenomenal. Now, those of you that watch other reviews may have seen other reviewers may not be as happy with their Kaigaloo new 316 as I am, but hey, part of buying mass-produced pens at a low price is you're going to get variety and variation. And they're not hand-tested, so enjoy what you get. 
but I can just tell you that this one is absolutely great. I love it. And with this J. Herbon ink, it's going to used in a lot of letters. Let's see if we can catch some of that glitter. The glitter is just apparent at a certain angle. I like it. It's fairly subtle. And that is a definitely a really, really nice orange ink. So overall, I'm happy with this ink. I'm happy with the pen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. For those of you that watch to the end, we're going to give you a little bit of a postscript. I've shown you my pen room from the inside. Here's my pen room from the outside. And of course, it's always good when you have a great Dalmatian like Milo guarding your pen room. The other thing that I need to share is uh, we have a new puppy. Her name is Maureen. And as you might expect, who cannot love a puppy? Maureen is phenomenal. <clears throat> Hopefully uh, she becomes a champion show dog as, as our other Dalmatians have. And the other thing I need to share with you is I've gotten a new toy. And here's what it looks like. It's supposed to arrive in a couple days. It's uh, moving its way by FedEx truck from California to New Jersey. And I have high expectations. I haven't indulged myself in something like this, which I consider an engineering marvel. It's certainly a hot item in a hot market. And this one uh, has uh, not a lot of exposure on the internet, which to me encourages me to want to try it. And I do love the look. And I have spent a lot of my life on motorcycles and uh, they are now part of my past just because I'm just as, not as interested as I used to be. But an electric bike, to me, makes total sense. A lot of the uh, driving that I do is within a few miles of home, so there's no reason to start up the car and burn gasoline. I can just take the electric bike. So look forward to Bike Talk that may be part of your YouTube viewing in the future. So I've reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching me talk about this pen as much as I've enjoyed using this pen. So we've reached the end of this video. And there will be many more to follow. We're going to say bye for now. Ah, I wish you could get a pen with a nib like this and an ink like this to really enjoy writing on paper. Hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, and enjoying your pens. Bye.